Good afternoon to you all. I will be speaking about a mild physiological signal based embedded system for non invasive measurement of endothelial function. This is a device that could allow us to detect a disease called endothelial dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is a marker for many diseases, including the two biggest killers in the world, heart disease and COVID-19. A marker is a symptom that appears before the disease actually shows symptoms. So this means that if you can detect endothelial dysfunction, then you can check for these severe diseases. So it is an excellent screening tool. A screen test is a simple check that can be used to identify healthy people. So we don't waste resources in testing them. There are several me different methods of measuring the endothelial function. One method includes taking an ultrasound scan of your arm and measuring the change in diameter. Other methods involve taking your body temperature or your PPG, which is a reading of your blood oxygen levels, or your blood pressure in terms of PAT. The problem is, that these methods are affected a lot by external factors. So if you're taking medication or if you're on a period, then these test results might not be correct. So to avoid this, what we did was put all of these methods together to create a single system that can measure all the different parameters so that we can use one another to verify the result. The system measures the blood oxygen level, the body temperature, the variation of your blood pressure, and something called bioimpedance. Bioimpedance is a measure of how well the body conducts electricity. A recent study at UOM identified that bioimpedance can measure endothelial function. In addition to making the hardware device. We tried to make a complete system. So we created a web-based user interface to make this as user-friendly as possible. To process the signals that we get from our sensors, we created our own signal analysis application that will clean and remove the external effects and calculate a set of indices that would give you an idea about endothelial health. So this is how our final system looked like. And now I will take you through a quick overview of how it is implemented and why we did it in this manner. The main system can be split into three separate components. One data transmission microcontroller and two signal acquisition subsystems. Each of these signal acquisition subsystems contains a set of sensors, a bioimpedance sensor, a temperature sensor, a blood oxygen level sensor for measuring the PPG, and a PET sensor. These two, these two systems will be connected to the two arms so that uh, we, be, we will be using uh, one of these arms as a control arm and uh, the other and other as an experimental arm. Uh, so the blood flow to the other arm is restricted for a small time so that we can test the endothelial function. These are the sensors that we have used uh, while it started out as a simple job of connecting the sensors. We had to face a lot of challenges. We had to face a lot of challenges in making it work because we had to, uh, we had to face a trade-off in taking accurate readings at the expense of more time or taking many readings per second, which would give us a clearer picture of the variations that happen in that time. The heart of the system is an ESP32 that takes in the two streams of data coming from the sense systems and 
synchronize it and then transmit it via Wi-Fi to a computer where the other calculations would happen. So the system is implemented as in a small 7.5 centimeter by 6.5 centimeter four layer PCB that has a few surface mount components. As it's a medical product, there are several safety features such as electrical isolation and emergency valves that are used to maximize the safety of the patient. We had to go on a very long journey with a lot of twists and turns in creating the system. This is a glimpse of how we went from a breadboard to our final circuit. I'll give you a few moments to witness our device in all its glory before I proceed. Now let us take a look about the software that powers this system. The software runs on a Node.js server and uses a MongoDB database and HTML and JavaScript to create the user interface. It has been, uh, imp the interface has been implemented with a set of interactive graphs and buttons that would make it very usable. We also created our very own signal processing application that would allow us to process the signals that we get from the sensors. Here you can see that the temperature signal that we get from our sensor has some noise. This is not ideal for processing. Therefore, we had to clean and filter it to get a very clear signal. This can be also seen in the PAT, the PPG, as well as the bioimpedance. Another step that we took was in normalizing the readings that we had taken so that external factors are removed. You can see that the top graph, the blue, the yellow and the red uh, PPG recordings have uh, the, some external factors. After normalizing, we can see that the control arm has a better cleaner line and the experimental arm has the expected variation which can be visibly seen. These variations can be used to calculate a set of indices. Indices are a set of numbers that give you an idea about the endothelial health. We calculated these indices from uh, each signal and we tried to separate the healthy and the unhealthy people based on these numbers. Here are our findings. You can see that in certain indices, such as the IPA index, you can clearly separate the healthy patients. But in some, such as the temperature fall or the N1 index or the CT index, it's a little bit harder because there's an overlap between the groups of people. This was the problem that we set out to solve. A single index uh, has this issue, but when we take a look at the two indices at the same time, there is a large separation between groups. This, this means that our system works uh, and we hope that it will create, uh, and it will, hope it will be very useful in the days to come. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my team members, Mr. Akila Uyanwatta, Ms. Imasha Gunasekar, Ms. Dinti Hemakumara, who were instrumental in making this a reality. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Anjula Silva and Mr. Thili Ambagahavat for their support and guidance throughout this project. I should also thank Mr. Kasun Samaravikrama for his advice on the subject of bioimpedance and also many others who helped us in this journey. Finally, thank you all for giving me your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed it.